Hi friends, my name is Akil Ahmed and in this particular video tutorial, I will show you how to do incremental data load in SQL Server. So recently I got a question from one of my subscriber, happy moments of life. Could you make video on incremental data load through a store procedure? So I thought to make a video on this one. So let's jump to the demo. I use SQL Server 2019 instance and I got a work database here. And in the work database, I got two tables, the staging underscore mail table and then the email table which is a target table in this particular case so if i show you the data so it contains like person's email id first name last name email and some other address related fields and then we've got like ssn and birth date as well and the email table is empty as of now as you can see so if you see the data in the source table so we have 1000 records in the staging underscore email table and now if you check the email table so this table is empty I also created an audit log table here so that when the process will run so it will make an entry into the audit log table that the this is the process and this is the table name and how many records got inserted by the store procedure how many records got updated and what is the status of the process and dated the time when the store procedure was completed so I have written a store procedure here sp underscore incremental load underscore email so let me explain you the store procedure code here in the first line what we are doing here we have written the create or alter proc store procedure name so what this particular query will do that it will create the store procedure if the store procedure won't exist in the database and if store procedure is already there then it will alter the code according to the latest code between the begin and end keyword okay and now what we are doing that we are checking if audit underscore log table does not exist on the database then it will create a new audit underscore log table so this will contains like process name table name records inserted updated status and the time when the process was ran so this is containing all this information now we have declared a summary of changes table and this will be populated by the merge statement so merge statement is the statement provided by the sql server and it is especially used for the incremental data load if you want to compare two sources then the merge statement can be used so let me show you the table like what table we are going to update so our table name is this one email table and it contains these many columns okay so this is the query of the merge statement that merge email as target so i will share all the script with you download it and you can use it in your environment so this is the syntax of merge statement that merge table as target so this is our destination table using this is our source table and then we need to define like on which column we want to make a join so we want to make a join on the email id column on the source table as well as the target table so if you see the source table so the source table is the staging table it contains the email id and as well as our destination table contains the email id so we will do a join on the email id and then when matched then what we exactly we are doing in this particular statement we are actually comparing all the columns like first name last name email address city state zip ssn and birth date so we are comparing all these fields between the source table and the destination table so we are actually using the hash byte function here sha1 so this is the sha1 algorithm we are using and what exactly we are doing we are just uh, combining the first name and last name email all the columns we are combining from the target table and then again we are creating the hash byte using a sha1 algorithm and then combining the columns from the source table and then checking the hash that if hash is changed it means that if data got changed between source and destination only then we will do the update so now here you have two options either you can use this particular hash function and then compare the data otherwise for example if you want to like directly check like how many records got updated or matched based on some few columns then what you can do you can just uh, write a query here like when target dot first name not equal to source dot first name okay and then you can write and target dot last name not equal to and then source dot last name you can write an end here okay so either you can compare the columns individually like this and for all the columns or you can use the hash byte function where you just need to compare just two columns actually because we are just calculating the hash using multiple columns and then we are just checking the hash column here okay so i use the hash function here and then as soon as for example if the data got matched and this particular data is not getting matched, something got changed for example 
a person's email id got changed in the source table last name got changed or for example address or any other information got changed then for those changed records we will update the data here so that we will update the target first name from the source first name so you know our target is the email table and our source is the staging underscore email table so we will update all the data to the target table if the data got changed and when no records are matched then insert the incoming records from source table to the target table so if records do not match between the source table and the destination table because we are doing a join on the email id column so if data do not match then insert the data to the target table okay so then we will insert the data to the target table and we will select the data from the source table so this is what we are doing here and then it will insert the number of records to the summary of changes so we will insert the data into that particular table and now then we are just simply doing insert into audit log and uh, select incremental data load now we are checking from the summary of changes that if the change is insert then the insert the data into the number of records inserted and if from the summary of changes if the change is update then insert the data into the number of records updated and this is the second last column in the audit log table that uh, status what will be the status so the status will be like sp completed and the time when the stored procedure got completed so this is what exactly we are doing in the stored procedure and i will share this stored procedure with you so let me go back and just try to execute the stored procedure here so at the moment our destination table is empty and our audit log table should also be empty so you can see that the audit log table is also empty now let me execute the stored procedure here so the stored procedure got completed successfully and it inserted 1000 records so if you check the data now in the email table so there should be 1000 records inserted to the email table so the data got inserted correctly and if you check the audit log table so yeah there are 1000 records got inserted here so this is working fine now suppose if i rerun this particular store procedure then it should not insert any data and it should also not update any data okay so I rerun the process and the process ran fine and now let me check the audit log table again. So now second time it inserted zero records and it updated zero records as well and the store procedure got completed successfully. And let me check the data again. So it contains 1000 records. So this is working fine. Now let me just try to update a record in the source table and see if only that particular record will be updated or not. Okay. So let me just select top four records from the source and destination table so for the email id 4 the email is this one at the rate apple.com in the source table and as well as in the destination table now suppose if i update the data and change the email id to dot org so if you recheck it so in the source table the data is dot org and in our destination table the data is dot com so now let me execute the store procedure and this time it should update only one record to the destination table so i ran the store procedure now and it showed that under change the update count is one so one record got updated and if i check the audit log table so you can see that one record got updated here and if i recheck the data in the both the tables so the data got updated as well so the update is also working fine here and now let me just try to insert one new record into the source table so let me insert a record here okay so the data got inserted correctly into the staging table and the email id is 1001 rajdeo and this one so if i for example check the data now in the email table so the last record let me do an order by desc here so in our destination table we got 1000 records and last email id is 1000 and in our source table we got 1001 records and so we got one record extra in the source table for Rajdev. Now let me execute the store procedure again. So this time it should insert only one record to the destination table. So the store procedure ran fine and under insert it inserted one record. So if you check the data now for example in the destination table so the one record should be inserted there. So now total records are 1001 and the last record is this one Rajdev and the email id is 1001 so the insert is also working fine and if i check the audit log table so for the most recent entry you can see that one record got inserted to the our email table and this is the time so this store procedure is working fine for the incremental data load so if any changes will happen to the source table then the same changes will be applied to our destination table as well
So this is how you can do the incremental data load in the SQL Server. So I think that's it for today's video. Thank you guys for watching the video and if you like the video then please click the like button. Do subscribe to our channel. Press the bell icon and click on all so that you will be notified every time I upload a new video. Thank you so much.